Hi guys, it's me Karen from Karen's Intuitive Jewelry. Hope you all are doing well. I'm hanging in there. We're watching another system and waiting to see what it develops into, but it looks like it's heading straight for us. So I'd appreciate um, positive thoughts and prayers coming our way. So I'm trying to get in a few videos before I possibly lose power. But I had um, a few subscribers ask me about some Halloween creations. And I already have a few on my channel. I have um, some wire wrap, witch's brooms. I have um, some soft soldered pumpkins. And um, I don't know what else. That may be it. But... Um, and as y'all know, I get bored. So I didn't want to do those again. So I was looking around for ideas and I came um, across this. Now I just created this last night. This is a prototype. So in this tutorial, I'm going to try and improve on it or at least come close to replicating another one. This is done in soft solder. I really, really love it. The idea came from, it was a sterling silver, uh, you know, silversmithing piece. Of course, that it was probably uh, wax casted or whatever. But I thought, hmm, <laughs> as I so often do, hmm. So, I hope I can come close to replicating this. I really, really like it. I'm gonna try and get it a little bit smaller because this is um, just under four inches and that's kind of big. It's about three and a half inches. So I'd like to get it, you know, maybe three inches. Now you could go smaller even and um, do earrings. That would be cool too. Okay, so here we go. Here's our tools and supplies and they'll be listed in the description box below. The um, broom handle I made out of 14 gauge pure copper wire. You can go um, thicker gauge like 12 I had 12 but I didn't want to struggle with it because um, it you know it's pretty thick you could maybe do a 16 gauge if you wanted and you could try it even in um, the pre tinned you know and add texture or whatever then for the broom bristles I used just an old nasty 24 gauge um, and I think it, it was about this kind of sounds crazy, but it's about 24 inches of this stuff to make all those bristles. And then to wrap it, I used a 26 gauge, all bare copper wire. Of course, my trusty Aiko FX60102 set at about 360, give or take, depending on what you want to accomplish. For this project, I'll be using Silva Bright since I'm going to be adding a black patina. And I like using this Liquid Flux by Novacan. And then your normal, you know, tools and supplies, uh, your cleaning pieces, however you choose to do that. Um, cutters for the wire straighteners. Um, I will, I think I hammered this a little bit and I may hammer it a little bit more this time. I definitely hammered uh, the bristles and this so it wasn't so bulky. So you'll need a bench block and a hammer. And um, I think that's about it. No tape required in this. I'm not using any gemstones, even though of course, because that's my love, I could have probably added a gemstone here and who knows maybe I will or I even thought about adding like some chains and and maybe a 
a bat or but you could get super creative with embellishments adding more texture but like i said this was just a prototype to see if i could even pull it off i think this is my favorite side here because there's more texture but um okay that's all i can think of there may be some incidentals and i'll try to list them like i said below so this time because i'm trying to go a little bit smaller i'm going to pull off um about three inches of the bare copper wire and this time I'm going to hammer the ends here to make it uh, easier to make loops on both sides so I'll be back Now we're going to take our 24 gauge and measure out approximately two and a half inches for the bristles and I'm going to do 20 of these, okay? And then when you get all those made, all I did was bend them in half, leaving a little loop here on the end. Right, so you can use your step bail making pliers or your round nose or whatever and just bend them in half, right? And just give them a, a smush. So I'll be back. Okay, we, and, and you guys, you can make these as long as you want. You can make as many as you want or as little as you want. This is totally, you know, up to you. This is just what I started with. So. You know, and you can just make it a wire wrap kind of thing and leave it in uh, copper. That's kind of how I, I saw another one too. They were making little copper earrings of the brooms. But, um, you know, I didn't want to go with too much since I knew it was going to be more flat because of the solder. But you could make it bushier. You can do whatever you want. But um, this is what I came up with. So 10 in each pile. Then I took the 16 gauge and cut off, oh, about a foot or 13 inches or so. And um, the, the, I made these loops, one smaller, because that's the one that's gonna be where the broom bristles are, and one bigger, so a cord or chain will fit through. And, um, so if this is closed off real well, you can start by doing this and then we're gonna feed these on one side and the other bundle on the other side. And then I'll be back. And this is the finicky part, so you just have to be patient. <laughs> okay, so we're going to kind of get our hands around these. Kind of smush them together. And we're going to crisscross these wires, the long wires, right? around the back and then we're going to bring them around the front like i say this is this is a little tricky but just get it started so one wire goes one direction and this other wire goes the other direction to make like that bundle, right? And then we can even take our pliers and give everything a smush. And I can 
tighten everything up again. And you can make it, you know, as much as you want to do. I'm going to do quite a bit. I'm going to do this whole batch because we're going to solder over it. Okay, I'll finish that up and I'll be back. And then at the end, you can just take these two ends and just twist them together. Right? And we can just line them, lay them down into the rest of the okay so that's kind of it for the wire wrapping now we'll be getting set up to start the soldering and you can play with this a little bit if you want to try and you know make these come around here a little bit more but this will all be soldered together so there's really no worries in fact, I think I'm going to take this over to the bench block and flatten it a little bit. And then you want to kind of spread your bristles out a little. Probably better if I use pliers and not mess my nails up. And you might have to play with this a little bit to get it, you know, kind of how you want and in the right orientation and all that now we're gonna put some flux on it generous amount of flux and we're just gonna focus on getting this bundle attached to the um, broomstick initially and then we can uh, trim off these edges and make them smooth and all that good stuff. So there's quite a bit of, you know, little fine details you'll have to be doing with this design. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more for you without getting the camera in my way. And let's see, I have my trusty washcloth ready. And I'm going to pick up generous amounts, let it melt, because remember all this wire is cold, so it really has to get up to temperature before it will all adhere. And I'm allowing the solder to melt down into the, you know, crevices of all that wire. And you might have to turn your temperature up a little bit if it's not, you know, melting how you want it. Let's see if it's adhered enough to mess with it. Yes. Okay, cool. Then I'm going to come in it from the back. And really focus on trying to get some of the solder down in all those grooves by allowing it to become molten and things will things can move on you because you're you know if you're applying a lot of heat which I am because I want it to be molten then that allows everything else to kind of loosen up so just be mindful
but you can see that it spreads which is pretty cool so let me go ahead and do the rest of this just get in this bundle and the top portion of the broom all connected and soldered and I'll be back okay that's what I got so far. And I went ahead and tinned um, the broom handle. Now I want to point out to you, let's see if I can find it. Anyway, I can't find it. It went flying somewhere. <laughs> um, this ended up being about the same size. So that's why I didn't, oh, here it is over here. I didn't tin the whole thing. I just wanted to get this all secure. And what I did before I tinned it is I cut this extra, you know, the, the original loop off because it would have been just about the same size and I wanted it a little bit smaller. So I just cut that off and redid this loop before tinning this handle and everything. But so this is what I got here. Now I want to point out to you, and the metal isn't hot at this point because metal cools really quickly, but this is the back. And yes, I did take it to the bench block and smash things a little bit. But if you notice, you'll get globs where you're losing definition, right? You want some of the definition of these grooves and stuff. Just hold your iron on there. Uh, a little bit more and it'll it'll come back once it melts now you have to give it a minute to let the iron and the metal all get up to temperature and you'll see when it all does that it'll start to glisten and you'll see it melting give it a minute and like I say we can turn this temperature up a little bit too it's really working on uh, getting this molten. See, it's starting to starting to melt. And if you just hold your iron on there, you'll see that it it's starting to melt um, the solder down in between all those little grooves. So you can get all that detail back, right? You just gotta let it melt. Okay. So now we're going to. And I can mess with that more, but you see, you get you get that those lines back and stuff. But I'm going to go ahead and cut some of these bristles off, and you know, you don't want them all the same size. Well, you might you might want them the same size. Oops, sorry about that. And yeah, you might have to do. Um, A little filing or whatever sanding and what I did on this one there were a couple that I just took my needle nose and just gave it let's see if I can show you it's still a little bit too hot just give it a little bend up and then we're gonna put solder on it right so it's not so sharp you can file it now or you can file it after we're all done Okay, so let's do the rest. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hold it with my washcloth. Okay, get my solder situated. And I did turn my iron up to 410. So about 50 degrees. And again, just hold the solder and move it around. You want to try and get it down on the, you know, in between. And you want it to look halfway decent. Uh, I will say that was, you know, 
took me a little bit to get to get this looking how I wanted it. It would be like this side, there's more, you know, filled in areas, and I like the side that isn't. So again, you'll just have to have to play with it. I can't give you an exact of what it's gonna take or how long or how much, or it's just a matter of what you're going for. Right, so you're basically tinning and then in areas letting it become molten and fill in, right? So I'll continue and I'll be back. Okay, this is what I've got so far. And yes, I did have to trim some of these edges off and we'll probably still have to do um, some sanding or filing because we don't want any sharp, even though if you watch some of these wire wrapping, there's a, a gal, I think from Jewel School, um, that makes earrings and man all the edges are I think they're really sharp and even this I um, can't think of the name of it I'll try to remember I'm bad about that I'll try to remember to list the other videos they're wire wraps of course I haven't seen anybody do a soldered witch's broom have you <laughs> I wish I could have watched the tutorial um, but even hers were a little bit sharp, you know, she filed them and whatnot, but they're, you know, they're random. They're not like, like soft solder where they're all kind of soldered together. Um, they're all individual pieces. So of course they're going to catch on your hair and possibly clothes and all that. So these not so much once we get them filed down, but I'm going to go ahead and wash this up and then I'll put a patina on it and we'll go from there. Okay, let's get some patina on this puppy. So again, you guys know very little. This time I'm gonna use a brush. Because there's all those little nooks and crannies and I don't have a gemstone I need to concern myself with. And it still doesn't look great. I wasn't really happy with it until after I cleaned it up from the patina, honestly. And then it just grew and grew and grew on me. <laughs> Each time I looked at it, I was like, oh, wow, that looks pretty cool. All right, so let that dry off. And if you want it even blacker, you know, just apply more. Let that dry a few minutes, and then we're going to wash it off. And um, I will evaluate the points and sand them down and polish it up and we'll see. Okay, so I'll be back. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And you, again, you can buff off as much as you want or as little as you want, but do keep in mind that, you know, there's wire under here and you can buff it too much and expose the copper. So, um, just gonna sand these sharp edges off a little bit and file them off a little. And I'll put it on a cord and I'll be back. Okay. 
I'm pretty pleased with this. I like it a lot. Now you'll notice the two differences. Like I said, I, I was gonna try to modify this or at least try to replicate it. Now the the bale, like this one is is turned in a different orientation than this one. This one I had to add jump rings and this one already has a, you know, a correct bale. Now there's different sizes too, which I'm really happy that I was able to do that. So yeah, it's fun actually. And again, it's this part, getting the, the bristles on there that can be a little a little um, challenging, but it's not impossible. This is a cleaner bundle than this one, for sure. For sure. But this has longer bristles, but, but I like them both. I think they both turned out cool. And of course, man, the options for pairing. This is a gunmetal which picks up the patina in this one. You can do a ball chain. This is more of a, you know, a more masculine, uh, thicker chain or the trusty black cord. So there you go, guys. What do you think? You gonna give it a try? And hey, thank you guys, my regular members, for their continued monthly support. I. I can't thank you enough. I really, really appreciate your support. And thank you to all my subscribers. And also the comments help and the likes. Of course, share these videos with people you think might be interested. And um, a big shout out to um, all of you guys for being here for me. I really, really appreciate your support. So there is a soft soldered, which is broom. Hope you enjoyed it. Till next time. Bye now.